Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 23rd May 2016. The first article by Arvind Panagaria, it can be a question directly in itself. So here, what is the major shift in strategy with regard to the present government is concerned? Even with reference to UPA 2, I can say this major shift has happened. So here, the first shift is towards um, improving the efficiency in the public service delivery. And the second thing is, shifting the people or social services or welfare programs from entitlements to empowerment. So the government is more talking about um, giving access to the services rather than giving services directly. So it is more and more depending upon insurance based delivery programs. So various programs were launched to make the insurance available for these people. So well, you have efficiency shifting towards the entitlements over here. And the second thing is the Janatan Yojana, Aadhaar, mobile connectivity, all these two are together promoting for efficiency. So if LPG system is observed and subsidies fit with regard to the fertilizers are observed, everywhere the government is moving towards the jam trinity. And the huge savings which are been brought in, they are being used for the providing access to the public services to the citizens. So let's remember what Amartya Sen has said. India is the country which is more and more depending upon the market based mechanisms to universalize the health and education. So here market based mechanisms it is mean the insurance schemes. The same thing Arvind talks about saying empowerment of the citizens. So in the second case with regard to empowerment let us see the different sectors. One is education. The government plans to bring in world class education systems in both private and public sector. And the second thing is social security benefits. So Pradhan Mantri Jeevana Jyoti Bhima Yojana, Suraksha Bhima Yojana, next with regard to agriculture, Fuzzle Bhima Yojana, all these things are the based on insurances. And added to that, government is giving Atal Pension Yojana. So it is, though not based on the insurance, it is also government is contributing partially. Now one of the reasons might be, the increasing burden on the government to reduce its fiscal deficit. Because the fiscal deficit is low, then it will attract the investments and it will fuel the economic growth. So the excessive focus on the economic growth and control over the fiscal deficit, that is making the government to cut down the expenditure on these projects. Now along with this, if you go to the next article, so rise of the sophisticated voter. So the Indian politics can be divided into three phases. So the first phase is uh, related to the Nehru Indira Gandhi era, which is congressional phase. And the second phase is uh, the rise of the competition. And the third phase is, uh, which is known as Mandal Mandir phase. And fourth phase is the developmental phase. So in the developmental phase today, so information revolution has created new dynamics with regard to the voting behavior are concerned. So if you see the developmental agenda is attracting the more amount of the voters. The employment opportunities is attracting the voters. It is due to the demographic factor on the one side. And on the other side, the information revolution has created new information access either it is to 3V or social media or whatever the means. So in this context, today the social media is very strong in influencing the urban young voters who are majorly the present day population who are seeking the jobs. So this is one of the reasons to be said for the success of the BJP government which was able to master the, uh, the social media strategy. So the information asymmetry is coming down. That's what the author argues. But however, I will say it other way around. Because of the uh, social media and control over the social media, 
the information has increased at the same time information asymmetry and propaganda also has increased according to me now fisherman in troubled waters now india pakistan especially off the western coast in the gujarat waters the boundaries are not clearly demarcated so in this case indian fishermen there is a good chance they will enter into pakistani waters and pakistani fishermen enters into the indian waters their life when they were arrested and put into the jail, the jails of uh, the respective countries then it is creating a huge human rights violation so to solve this situation some institutional mechanisms were created one among that is a joint judicial committee on prisoners which consists of the retired judges now this is no more functioning so this has to be revived that is the central demand of this article now inclusive development or inclusion and development so if the development has to be sustainable it has to be inclusive inclusive not just mean economic inclusion it also shall be social inclusion so if you take um, the assam elections um, the bjp's major plank um, is development um, and at the same time the curtailing of the illegal immigrants from the bangladesh so that's why the certain muslim dominated areas also have elected bjp leaders um, so in the long run the assam has to really take forward the development so it instead of building the divides the government has to work towards bridging the divides so the development and inclusion cannot be separated from each other now coming to the reusable launch vehicle so this technology will save millions of dollars for india so a rocket which is launched if it is able to keep the satellite in the orbit and it is uh, come back into the onto the earth again so then we can call it as reusable launch vehicle so when it is entering the atmosphere then this uh, reusable launch vehicle it faces a huge friction and huge temperature is generated so the special tiles are coated over the vehicle and if there is any uh, micro fracture in them it will burn down this is what happened with kalpana chawla and uh, i mean and death, death of the indian born astronaut so india has appeared to master this technology so now india is spending this space shuttle uh, to 50 kilometers into the space then it will take another 70 kilo total 70 km up in the space and it will come back at a speed of 5.7 mach this is called as hypersonic hypersonic flight or hypersonic speed so that and because of this it is also called as hypersonic flight experience 01 now coming to vietnam so especially after the south china sea and china's aggression in the south china sea the southeast asian countries even they were enemies of the united states previously they are moving close to usa now so the major example is vietnam you know that um, vietnam war has dented the image of the united states um, and us was unable to win the war over here now in this case the vietnam and united states reapproachment uh, is majorly related to south china sea and china's uh, uh, i mean drilling and also aggression in south china sea so united states uh, in this obama visit it wants to supply the arms to vietnam and it wants to demand for the human rights uh, you know, protection in vietnam this is what is going to happen and coming to naga outfit let us know something about it so when uh, nda government came to power naga peace talks um, happened so in this naga peace talks intermediate naga peace talks um, it was in mediated with nsc and im faction there is another faction that is nsc and kaplong faction it was sidelined then mr kaplong with other leaders separatist leaders of assam bodoland they have established a united front and this has led to an ambush in manipur so 
for the first time Indian government in its deposition before a tribunal on the extension of the Armed Forces Special Powers Act declared that uh, NSC and Kaplong faction is working behest of the China and China providing for the necessary monetary and the uh, logistical help to this particular terrorist faction. Coming to the Indian Express, uh, let us see the FDI flows. Now FDIs, these are the foreign investments. They grow flow to the places where there is already a better infrastructure and return on investment is high. So it means if there is underdeveloped area either Bihar, UP. So in these areas probably you don't see large investments flowing in. So on the other hand, Delhi, Bombay that is Maharashtra and after that Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh where the relatively better infrastructure exists, there the FDI flows are increasing. So one way the FDIs are being criticized for the reason, uh, uh, as a reason for imbalanced regional development in the country. And coming to India, US and an eastward tilt. Now see, so there is a democratic axis which United States want to build uh, against the communist China in Asia. This democratic axis consists of Japan, India, USA and Australia. So it will counter the China in this particular territory itself. Now on the other hand, if you take India's situation, it has major its strategic and economic interest in the Persian Gulf. And Afghanistan is also strategically important for India. But USA is not much interested on giving a much greater space for India over here. So which is of greater concern to it. And it wants to take up a greater role again in the democratic axis again as the China. So this is what is a major difference between these countries central point. And victory for populism. With regard to Tamil Nadu elections. A rent seeking behavior is established. Where the electors they are being offered post electoral bribes in the form of the freebies. Because of this competitive populism, the long term growth of the state is getting affected. Employment is getting worsened. Added to this, the populism is associated with authoritarianism. Now, anyone who is criticizing the government is facing the sedition charges or defamation charges. So in these circumstances, so the victory in Tamil Nadu author argues that it is an authoritarian populism. Authoritarian populism. And if you see the freebies offered by different political parties, I can call it as competitive populism too. Now India's Chabahar test, what does this mean? Now, the Chabahar port, it was agreed for building in 2003 and it is very strategically important for India because it provides an alternate access to the Afghanistan and added to that Central Asia and West Asia, many of the countries, the access is being limited through the Pakistan. So it is one of the greatest tragedies of dividing India where India lost access to its West. So in this context, um, this uh, the park occupied Kashmir is another region, reason India lost the contact with Afghanistan. So in these circumstances, it's providing an al not only an alternative route to Afghanistan, but also to the, the Central Asian countries. So it being so important, um, even after 13 years, still it is at the discussion stage and there is no substantial progress. Rather than the Iran condition, uh, now, Raja Mohan, what he says is this, India's internal circumstances and India's complex engagement with different systems, this is the major reason. So India may say it as strategic autonomy, more than the strategic autonomy, it is the failure of in, uh, India to uh, bring in a coordination between different agencies which are able to take up projects outside India. It is not only the story with Chabahar port, but any large projects taken outside the Indian, sub outside the Indian uh, uh, subcontinent, it is facing the similar challenge. And coming to crude risk, now what are twin deficits? 
the fiscal deficit and the current account deficit we call together as twin deficits. So with regard to the fiscal deficit, now the fall in crude oil prices it has helped both the deficits let us see. One is India is an oil importing country so as fall in prices it has reduced the current account deficit. The government did not pass the benefits directly to the people and it has raised the exercise duty so it has curtailed the fiscal deficit by making a windfall profit. Now in these circumstances if crude oil prices increases the world situation the world situation which was faced by UPA2 government that is high inflation plus twin deficits this can be a danger for the growth prospects of the country that is what is this editorial talks about lie low in Nepal so with regard to the Nepal the communist party of Nepal united Marxist Leninist and Maoist they have come together so in this case their common stand is anti-Indian nationalism raising the sentiments against India and strengthen their uh, nationalism so now in these circumstances instead of fueling the or uh, becoming a part or, um, or giving space for their actions uh, India shall keep itself low that is what is this article talks about a case for too many cases what it says is this if you take India into consideration there are a huge number of cases pending so among all the people who are staying in the jails uh, more than 68% are the under trials that shows the weakness of our rule of law. So the major reason for these pending cases is governmental litigation. So government is the highest, the biggest litigant before the courts. So in these circumstances what is suggested is this. The police and improper investigation techniques added to that just uh, making the people or else uh, booking the cases against the innocent people and most of them belonging to marginalized and sections and minorities uh, it need to be avoided if these police excesses are avoided uh, then automatically it also leads to reduction in cases pending before the courts uh, that is as government litigation is going to come down so these are the articles for today thank you very much all the best